Okay, so this next equipment, what is this? This is our uh, small pilot membrane filtration equipment uh, that we use when we are doing a little bit more upscaled work. Uh, so when we have uh, 100 to 1,000 liter of solution to treat and not working in lab scale, maybe at a half a liter scale. So, so this is an equipment which uh, has uh, the possibility of either using a plate and frame module that is mounted here uh, right now, mm -hmm. or a spiral module that is standing right here. So it's interchangeable which, what, which type we are using. So right now there's a uh, plate and frame module, uh, and the module is here. The membranes are sitting in here, and they look like this. So there's a plate uh, that the membrane rests on. There's a membrane. And there's a second membrane. So between these two membranes, the uh, the liquid flows. Uh, so the, the, um, the pure liquid comes out somewhere and the, the incoming, the feed comes in somewhere else. Exactly. The feed comes in through the end here, goes between the, the membranes. The solution that goes through the membrane goes through the membrane and into this plate. So th these plates are actually hollow. It's collected in these plates and sent out through this little hole here. This is where it collects. Okay. And the liquid that passes through the membrane comes out the other end and is collected and is then a concentrated solution of whatever we've been filtrating. So where are those uh, connections on the equipment? Yes, I'll show you. We have the inlet flow here. It goes in here, goes through the membrane, and comes out here, through that tube. So down there. And the uh, solutions that has permeated the membrane comes out in these tubes here. So we differentiate between feed, permeate, and retentate. Yes. That's basically it. Uh, so, so this is the solution, uh, or this, this is the membrane module. Uh, and this is only one part of the, the actual system. Uh, and the task uh, in, in this demonstration is to uh, make a flow chart of a typical membrane module. And I will also start this one up. Uh, to show you a little bit how, how they will operate and uh, what you will be able to see. So if we, I mean, this is an equipment where liquid is circulating. So let's start with the feed tank. The feed tank. And the feed tank is over here. And right now we have a water solution in there. There's a heater in that one, because we want maybe to, to heat up the solution there. Mm -hmm. From the feed tank, it goes into the pump. And this is a centrifugal pump. This here is the engine. Uh, the big one there. The big one that uh, drives the pump. The liquid comes here. This is a valve that is now closed. It goes through this, which is a heat exchanger, mm -hmm. which we can use to also control the temperature of the solution. Uh, since there's a heat exchanger, we can either use steam or hot water or something to make to control here. It goes through a flow meter, comes up until we have the, a pressure, pressure gauge over here. Here we have another valve that can uh, we can close off the module with. Goes into the module, through the module, and through a valve that we can use, be used to control the pressure, and back into the feed tank. Okay. The permeate is collected, sent through flow meters, 
and either uh, you drop it into a drain uh, or you go take it back to the tank, depending on what kind of things you are studying in your experiment. Yeah, so the permeate is the clean one. So in most of the things we do, the permeate is, is essentially water. Yes. Uh, it depends on what, what kind of membrane filtration, what kind of membrane process you're actually studying. Mm-hmm. In, in, in most cases, both the retentate and the permeate are products that you can continue working with. Yeah. Uh, here we also have two pressure gauges at the inlet and outlet of the uh, module to be able to see the pressure drop from the inlet to the outlet. Because there will be a pressure drop here. Okay. So, let's see if we can start this one up. So, this is a little bit, uh, a little bit of control for this, uh, equipment. So, I'll, uh, reduce the speed of the pump. I'll open the valve. And I will open this valve on this side. So now, the valves you open now, what are they? They are to section off the uh, membrane module. So if for some reason I want to stop everything, mm-hmm. I can close that one off and I know that I can pull, uh, I can remove everything here, change the membranes and still have liquid in the system. Ah, okay. So with most process equipment, you always have a valve before and after to be able to section off that part. So then you can remove and, for example, clean. And, remove uh, and clean, change membranes, whatever. Yeah. So let's start. Uh, only Now this is a frequency controlled pump. So I'm starting this as, at 2 hertz, which mm-hmm. is basically just idle speed. Uh, and it will start pumping really, really slowly. Then by increasing the set point, I can go up in uh, flow. We will see over here. I'm hearing a trickling sound. Ah, yeah. Something is happening. Something is actually happening. So this is the flow we have at, uh, uh, what was it, 11 hertz. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is a nice little flow. I'm probably going to stop here since this is just a demonstration of what what it looks like. Mm-hmm. You can imagine if I would to go to 50 hertz, which is normal speed for a pump, this would be uh, much more violent. Yeah. Uh, but uh, that being violent, it also is a risk that that hose would start doing this, and then we would be wet, and everyone would be sad. Yeah, another reason to have lab coats. <laughs> another reason to have a lab coat. So what I can do now is uh, I can start controlling things here. We see now I we have a uh, temperature or sorry pressure pressure yeah pressure uh, at the inlet. We can also see that we have a pressure here and a pressure here. There's zero point thirty eight bars here and zero point three bars here, so there is a pressure drop, which is an indication that we have a flow. But that's not a transmembrane pressure, right? This is not a transmembrane pressure. This is the gauge pressure on the uh, uh, retentate side. Okay. So the uh, gauge pressure on the permeate side is zero bar, uh, which means that now we have about 0.34 uh, in membrane, transmembrane pressure, yeah. which is a fairly low transmembrane pressure. But we, we're now running this with clean water, so we, we do actually have a flow through the, the permeate as well. But this also means that you don't have the same transmembrane pressure over the entire equipment. Exactly. And, and that is what one thing that one needs to take into consideration, especially for microfiltration and ultrafiltration. Mm-hmm. It's not as because those are processes run at fairly low transmembrane pressure. So a high pressure drop will influence what happens in the beginning and in the end. 
but in a reverse osmosis setting where we have maybe 60 bar here and 55 bar here, it wouldn't make a difference mm. for what would happen, not to the same extent at least. So what I can do now is, if I turn this valve, we will hopefully see the pressure gauge on the inlet going up. Is it increasing? Is it increasing? A little bit, right? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Not much, but a little. And at the same time as I was doing that, you see now that this flow has dropped. Yeah. Because this is a centrifugal pump. So this pump is affected by the pressure it needs to overcome. So in order to keep the flow up, I now have to increase the set point of the pump. So, so to keep the, the, the permeate flow steady here, to that's a bit tricky. To keep the retentate flow steady. Yeah. <laughs> that's a bit tricky, right? right? So now you see the flow has gone up a bit. Yeah, and I can hear the sound there, so... There's... Yes. And at the same time as, as I was doing that, the pressure there was increasing, right? No. So the, the inlet pressure now increased. So to, in order to set the, the flow that I want across the membrane and the pressure that I want as a transmembrane pressure, mm -hmm. I need to work with both this valve and the pump speed. Are there other pumps you can use to make it easier? Had we had a displacement pump instead, that would always give the same flow. Okay. And then I would just control the uh, pressure with the uh, retentate valve. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, a centrifugal pump or a uh, uh, displacement pump behaves differently uh, also in the membrane system. There is a computer here as well. There is a computer there as well. Uh, this is something that we use to record the data uh, uh, for the um, uh, for the process. So, if if you look at these uh, graphs here, we can actually see uh, when I started the process, when I and when I started increasing the uh, different things. Yeah, there is a small jump there in the curve. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is there anything more we should say? No, I think this is basically it about uh, this mm. membrane equipment. Now you should be able to draw, draw a flow chart of this. Okay, thank you.